Hello YouTube, this is Dr. Ronald W. Satz, Founder and Chair of the International Society of Unified Science and President of TransPower Corporation, a commercial and custom software and manufacturing and certified systems engineering company. I work as both a systems and mechanical engineer and as a theoretical physicist. Today, as with most of my screencasts, we'll be discussing the reciprocal system of theoretical physics and how it compares to conventional theory. Two topics today. Where's the antimatter? This is a conundrum of my opponents in conventional physics. And what about the giant halo around Andromeda? You know, that's our nearby large galaxy. Okay, let's go to topic number one about antimatter. We'll go to Science Daily, as we usually do. And the title of this piece is Left Handed Cosmic Magnetic Field Could Explain Missing Antimatter. See, what a stretch my opponents in theoretical physics have to make. So it says here, the discovery of a, quote, left-handed magnetic field that pervades the universe could help explain a long-standing mystery, the absence of cosmic antimatter. Wow. So now let's just scroll down here. It says uh, here with the caption of this illustration, uh, the illustration of the Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope, FGST, map of the sky with the central band removed to block out gamma rays originating in the Milky Way. Gamma rays of different energies are represented by dots of various colors. Red dots represent the rival locations of very energetic gamma rays. Green dots represent lower energy and blue dots represent lowest energy. The new analysis looks for spiral patterns in the distribution of gamma rays within patches on the sky with the highest energy gamma ray at the center of the spiral and the lower energy gamma rays further along the spiral. A helical magnetic field in the universe gives an excess of spirals of one-handedness and FGST data shows an excess of left-handed spirals. <laughs> now let's see if there's anything else here. Uh, so it says, planets, stars, gas, and dust are almost entirely made up of normal matter of the kind we are familiar with on Earth. But theory predicts that there should be a similar amount of antimatter like normal matter, but with the opposite charge. For example, an anti-electron or a positron has the same mass as its conventional counterpart, but a positive rather than negative charge. So, anyway, this just gets more and more bizarre. So, let's go back. And this comes from my theoretical physics blog at reciprocalsystem.guru. And I say here, and as usual, I'll be annotating my, my blog posts. Conventional theorists don't understand why they cannot find, quote, antimatter stars and galaxies. This is because they're using the wrong theories. In the reciprocal system, there are two major regions of the universe. One, the material sector in which stars and galaxies are located in coordinate space. And two, the cosmic sector in which stars and galaxies are located in coordinate time. So in our material sector, the three dimensions of space and the one dimension of the time progression stand out. Whereas in the cosmic uh, sector, the three dimensions of time and the one dimension of clock space stand out. The individual cosmic atoms are widely separated, uh, widely separated in our space, even though they may be quite close in coordinate time. We cannot see cosmic stars and galaxies. We do, however, come across individual cosmic atoms on occasion. Given that the speeds are above unity C in the cosmic sector, you know, but with the velocity equation flips T over S, these atoms are very high energy. 10 up to the 20th power elect, uh, electron volts, which is the observed energy of some, some cosmic ray particles. Okay, let's go into the second topic here. The giant halo around Andromeda. So we'll go back to Science Daily. And this article says, Hubble finds giant halo around the Andromeda galaxy. Scientists using NASA's Hubble Space Telescope have discovered that the immense halo of gas enveloping the Andromeda Galaxy, our, near, our nearest massive galactic neighbor, is about six times larger 
and 1,000 times more massive than previously measured. <laughs> Isn't that remarkable? My how measurements change. Anyway, what does this mean for our own galaxy? Because we live inside the Milky Way, scientists cannot determine whether or not such an equally massive and extended halo exists around our galaxy. It's a case of not being able to see the forest for the trees. If the Milky Way does possess a similarly huge halo, the two galaxies' halos may be nearly touching already and quiescently merging long before the two massive galaxies collide. Hubble observations indicate that the Andromeda and Milky Way galaxies will merge to form a giant elliptical galaxy beginning about 4 billion years from now. Yeah, I would say that all the galaxies of the local group will eventually combine into a huge, giant, elliptical or spheroidal galaxy. Alright, let's see if there's anything else here. Uh, it says, the dark, nearly invisible halo stretches about a million light years from its host galaxy, halfway to our own Milky Way galaxy. This finding promises to tell astronomers more about the evolution structure of majestic giant spirals, one of the most common types of galaxies in the universe. And we'll just scroll down here. Um, Okay, it says here, but where did the giant halo come from? Large-scale simulations of galaxies suggest that the halo formed at the same time as the rest of Andromeda. <laughs> uh, that's not what the uh, reciprocal system says. But anyway, the team also determines that it's enriched in elements much heavier than hydrogen and helium. And the only way to get these heavy elements is from exploding stars called supernovae. Wrong. All right, that's enough of this nonsense. Let's go back and see what the truth is. Well, there is no dark matter, for sure. This discovery verifies what the reciprocal systems alongside globular clusters or their gas dust predecessors originate in intergalactic space and eventually surround galaxies, for example, creating the sign halo around Andromeda, and are captured by them. So, covered the two topics today. If you want the simplest possible explanation of the reciprocal system, Please obtain my work, The Unmysterious Universe. It's very simple, contains all the concepts, many illustrations. You can get it from Amazon or TranspowerCorp.com. Now, once you finish that and you want to learn all the mathematics, and I mean all the math, you can get my software ebook, Existence and Interactions, a Computational Treatise of the Reciprocal System. The true theory of everything. 1711 pages in the PDF, 1711 pages in the PowerPoint file, thousands and thousands of equations, numerous diagrams and tables. It'll keep you busy for months. Again, you can get this from transpowercorp.com or from Amazon. Now, once you've mastered that, you can work with two very comprehensive database modules the Reciprocal System Microcosmos database which has all the property calculations for photons, subatoms, atoms, compounds, and alloys, and the Reciprocal System Macrocosmos database, which has all the property calculations for the universe as a whole. Galaxy clusters, galaxies, star clusters, stars, planets, moons, minor bodies such as asteroids and comets, nebulae, and voids. Again, you can get these from Amazon.com or TranspowerCorp.com. Once you have that, you can use it in your scientific or engineering practice. My opponents in theoretical physics have nothing like any of these products. Okay, thanks for your attention. Study the reciprocal system and prove it for yourself.